So, welcome to Arc Cincinnati here on Star 64. This I'm Bob Herzog. I'm Jen Dalton, and this is not Studio B. It is not Studio B. We promised you we were going to take the show not just on the road, but on the water. And my goodness, have we delivered on that? Let me tell you. Well, that's what we do. We deliver on our promises here. And I don't know what the people can see right now, how far, but I don't know if Megan has zoomed out and revealed where we are on the water. We're not on the Ohio, like many had guessed. We are in the fountain. <laughs> the majestic, the majestic in fountain. In front here of at Union Terminal. Museum Center, Union Terminal. Yeah. Because why not? And let us be clear. We got special dispensation yes. to do this. You're not allowed you to just can't, do this. You can't just come do this. So don't don't come down here with your, your boogie boards and your inflatable things. There's a whole line of security standing we, behind there the camera right the, now. There was the registration process. There was an FBI background check. <laughs> a lot happened. Um, let me tell you right now, though, Jen Dalton. Can I tell you something right now? Please. You know, when I got into the local news game, yeah. these are the kind of moments I was thinking about. Yep. Yeah. I don't think I don't think you can deny real Edward R. Murrow kind of moment. The right connection here. we have to the community right now, we are we are doing something, yay, that I believe many have wanted to do, but have never done before. But will experience it <laughs> through us. We are your vessel to moments in Cincinnati <laughs> that you have dreamed of your whole and life. And Tanner says we need to move along. All right, so let's because see. Because we do actually have a show to get through. We do. Let's see what's brewing in the dry state. And mine are really cold right now. Stop it's, a it's numb. very chilly in here. Numb. All yep. right, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Summer festival season is here in the tri-state, and one of the most highly anticipated arts events kicks off today. And what are we talking about? That summer fair is mm. returning to the grounds of Coney Island. Gates open today at noon for the three-day arts festival. And there will also be food vendors and live music. Tickets start at $10. I'm so glad that they were able to, despite everything that's going on with Coney Island and the sale of yeah. grounds and all of that, that they're still able to have a few big events this summer still going on on the grounds of Coney yeah. Island, Summer Fair being one of them. Because you, you literally have people come in from all over the country to participate in that event. It's a, it's a, you know, a juried selection yep. process. And I, as I was listening to some of the stories about it earlier, as somebody said, that's these people's job. Correct. You know? Correct. This is their job. And so they they are professionals to the highest, you know, and you're going to see the highest quality of art there. And it's just a lot of fun. And again, I'm so glad it's back at Coney. Me too. Me yeah. too. You know what else? What? This right here. This is our job. Someone should paint this. Look at this. This is our job. Yeah, this is our we're job. We're doing this. And so far. Literally for our livelihoods. So far, I don't think we're fired. Our so families are counting yeah. on this to be successful. Um, here's another thing going on. <laughs> if you're not maybe going to head to Summer Fair, how about since Italia Festival starting tonight at Harvest Home Park? The event celebrates the tri state's rich Italian heritage with a heavy emphasis on the food, of course. You can sample over 50 food items from 12 different booths. This event benefits St. Catherine of Siena Catholic School in Westwood. That fun kicks off tonight with an adults-only carnival celebration. From 6 to midnight, Saturday and Sunday are the family fun days with rides, games, cooking demonstrations, and more. Saturday's hours are from 3 to 11. Sunday is from 1 to 9. Have you been to Cincinnati Oh, yeah, before? I have, and I know you have at Let the Harvest Home Park. The, the, the food? So good. Oh, my So good, and the, and the raffles. There are so many raffles that happen at that thing. Yeah, and yeah. Harvest Home Park's just a joy anyway, whether you're, it is. you're going over there for I the like regular Harvest Home Park. You know, things for the Cicelia. kids and fun. It's just a fun go celebration. Hung go hungry. Yes, Go hungry, go hungry, and you will, you will not go home upset. Can I tell people what we're doing here? Like, they're going to see us looking to the middle part oh, of the boat. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Girl, I'm trying to lift my leg without tipping the boat over. This is uh, this is our rundown for the show so These that we know what's strips, coming next. Because we have no celebrant right now. So that's fine. So just so you know. There you go, lifting the leg. Put Whoa, the, there, there you go. go. That Secure was nice. it in there, Bob. Yeah, do it, lock it down. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you know what you're doing? You know what you just did? Can I splash no, no, you just anchored the news. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. That was hilarious. Well, LGBTQ Pride uh, Month man. begins tomorrow, but you can celebrate a day early in Northern Kentucky. The NKY Pride pop-up shop is from 3 to 6 this afternoon at the NKY Pride Center on Pike Street in Covington. You can buy your LGBTQ plus Pride gear ahead of the Pride Parade in Northern Kentucky. And that festival is on Sunday 
in Covington's Main Strauss Village. Now you have to wait a few weeks for the largest Pride Festival in our area. This year, Cincinnati Pride is going to be held on Saturday, June 22nd at Sawyer Point and Yeatman's Cove. Cincinnati Pride will be free to attend. And I know there's another Pride celebration uh, also this weekend in Hamilton. Oh, okay. And I think that one is Saturday. So you can do Saturday in Hamilton, Sunday in Covington. So now, obviously, kind of yes, like all through the month, yeah. too. There'll be, yeah. there'll be kind of things here and there for Pride Month. Uh, but as we, as we said, I guess, was it last week or even maybe two weeks ago, from, from that point of the month of May, going back a week or two, through September, the, every single weekend is just chock full of things. If you want to go to a festival, if you want to go to an arts festival or a food festival or a pride festival, whatever the case may be, more than likely, there is a festival for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And yeah. there are other great things to do, like the Cincinnati Museum Center. And we're going to be talking about that coming up here in just yeah, a bit. Yeah, we've got Cody Hefner. He'll be coming on with us in just a little bit. But let's hope, let's hope here that a day off, a day off. Maybe the Reds get to do something like this. Maybe. They need a little R&R, &R, a little... Right? Bring, out, bring, bring Ellie De La Cruz to the fountain. Come and just, just, let, just him, let him drip let around. Let him dip in the yeah. healing waters of Union Terminal. Um, they're actually going to be in Chicago for a game this afternoon, so hopefully they got to dip in those waters and have their day off time coasting? yesterday. A little bit. It's okay. We'll be fine. Okay. Uh, we're, we're listening to the side. I think listening is the nautical term. Oh, listening. Okay. I, think so. I don't know. Uh, but Reds legend Pete Rose was in town last night and gave some insights on how he thinks the season is going so far this year. No secret, Reds have been underperforming, underwhelming really coming off of last season. But Pete says some of the issues you know, they seem to be stemming from those from those younger guys. Heck, they're all younger guys. They're confusing to me because they got a lot of great young players. Uh, but the young players that are great aren't playing great. You got a guy like Dela Cruz. You know, how can he hit 220? How can a guy can run like that? It's built like that. It's got an arm like that. You know, how can he hit 220? First game is today in Chicago at 220, which is odd because Ellie De La Cruz is batting 220, according to Pete Rose. Meant to be. 220, 220. Meant to be just like this day was meant to be for us to be in this fountain. I'm just kicking back and I'm relaxing and I'm enjoying it. You know, sometimes I go 220, sometimes I go 221, 221 whatever, whatever it takes. takes. That's Quickly, sort of, Mr. Mom. that's what we live by. Good. That's a rule um, that we live by. Hey, I wanted to mention quickly before yeah. we go to break. Sure. That. Uh, Do you think oh, we're still on, by the way? Do you think they've cut, they cut the feed at this possibly point? Possibly we could be fired. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm just, Tanner says, unfortunately, yes, we are still on live on the television. <laughs> uh, I did want to mention to people who love our Friday segment, Draw the News, yeah. that we are going to be doing that today. We are. Um, how you ask? Well, it's going to be a little different, and you'll want to stick around and find out. That was an effective tease. Thank you. You are a broadcast mm -hmm. professional. Uh, I don't know what time it is in, in the script here. Tanner says he'd like me to tell you what time it is, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I do. Wait, what? it is 8.08. Yeah. Ah, 8.08 oh, now. And there's a big clock right behind us, but I can't see it. Don't, oh, that's there, a great, don't turn to Cody, it. that's a great point. Yeah. There's a giant clock literally right behind oh, me. Megan's going to zoom in on it because she's hey, so good. Hey, you know, we may be outside Union Terminal, but there's a whole lot going on inside the building because, again, you're not allowed just to come get in the fountain. It's not a thing. Uh, but just ahead, we hear about what you can find at the Cincinnati Museum Center this summer. We're talking, we're talking about the Omnimax later. Correct. Hey! Welcome back, everybody. We are hanging out today outside Union Terminal. Special dispensation has put us in, yes, a dinghy, in, yes, this fountain. The man, the only person who could make this happen, Vice President of Marketing, Cody Hefner. Cody! Good morning. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for floating in. <laughs> thanks for offering the opportunity. And thanks for going all in 100% with us. You really, this is not your normal outfit, right? Or maybe do you walk around the museum? I, I typically do. You dress for the job you want. Right? <laughs> and, uh, I, I always dreamed that my wife would have a, a Roman god as a husband. And so I started dressing like one. You delivered. Smart move. You delivered. That's, That's a right. smart move. Um, uh, I say obviously you are you are toged up with purpose. Uh, Pompeii is the is the is the big exhibit going on right now. I think it's almost the end of July. Yes, yes. So it's it's here through the end of July, July twenty eighth. So you got a you know a few more weeks, a couple more months to come out and see it. But it is incredible. I mean, these are one hundred and fifty artifacts from Pompeii itself, from the actual city that was destroyed by Vesuvius. So it's really an incredible snapshot of life at the height of the Roman Empire. So. 
when people, to walk us through the exhibit a little bit, what kinds of things they can experience when they go in. I know you talked about there's artifacts and that type of thing, but w w what is it like when you're walking through? It's a, it, you're walking through the daily lives of these people. So you are seeing the tools they would use for fishing. There are fish hooks in the exhibit that look like you could pull them out of your tackle box today and wow. go wow. and toss them into the lake. Uh, there are there are pots, there's jewelry, there's coins, there's gladiator armor and gladiator weaponry. Uh, of course, there's statues, there's wall frescoes from buildings in Pompeii that are still bright and vibrant today. So when people think of Pompeii, they think of the destruction. The exhibit is really about life in Pompeii. Wow. It's about how people live uh, all the way up to that tragic moment. You've been open long enough now with this exhibit. One of the things I keep thinking about is the experience afterward. Like what, what yeah. kind of, I guess what kind of feedback are you getting for people? Because when you open a new exhibit, you know, you kind of have an idea of what it might be like, but you've been open with this one long enough now where you absolutely know what it's been like for people. What are they saying? People have enjoyed it. They, they've really had a lot of fun with it. Uh, this is, I, I like to call it a, a sexy traditional museum exhibit. Uh, and we've had scholars come through that who, who are blown away by the level of artifacts that are in the exhibition. Um, kids, adults who come through and they know the story, they know almost this mythology of Pompeii, right. but have a new respect for it and are just so astounded by what they see in the first half of the exhibit. And then you walk into the second half, which talks about the destruction, talks about the eruption. You have the body cast and it's this almost reverent, somber moment. Uh, so it's it's that dichotomy of people saying, wow, this is incredible to see artifacts on this level here, uh, but then to to kind of realize why they're still available, why they're still around, and, and to reflect on that moment. What have kids' experiences been like? To, uh, because I know a lot of people, my son is already out of school, and parents are looking for stuff to do in the yep. summer. So this is something that the whole family can enjoy, right, and, and things that kids can experience and uh, take in as well. Yeah, it's it's accessible at all ages. Uh, and I personally, I, I'm a kid. Bob, you're a kid. A little bit. <laughs> Jim, today you're a kid at least. <laughs> uh, the gladiator stuff is so cool. Oh. I mean, it's, it's legit. And there's this wonderful uh, animation that takes different gladiator styles and pits them against each other. And you see who would come out on top and it rolls through them. So oh, it's wow. this really awesome uh, animation, and then right next to it, there are cases of all these weapons and armor that that tie into it. So, oh, man. yeah, it's when it, when I was a kid, you used to go to book fairs and you see all these books with mummies, these golden yeah. uh, tombs and sarcophagi on the front. This is the the Roman Empire. You see, when you think of the Roman Empire, you are seeing those artifacts here. And yeah. Like many, I think about I think about the Roman Empire all the time. And do people go through and say, "Are you not entertained?" Oh my gosh, you have to. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. They told me I had to stop doing that. Oh, <laughs> that I was. I figured I wasn't the first one to say that. I was scaring people. So, <laughs> but most said yes. Oh my gosh, leave me alone. Uh, let me. Since we were talking about kids a little bit, yeah. there are so many other things to do down here, especially during the summer months. Yeah. With as you said. You've got these extra hours in the day. You've got to fill them somehow. Now, we're nice and cool out here right now. Yeah. But there are going to be days where it is going to be dog hot and humid. And, boy, there's some nice, cool places inside the kids love. Well, the Ice Age, for starters. Right. But uh, we're opening two new exhibits, two permanent exhibits this summer. Oh. Uh, one at the end of June called Kids Town Park. It's all about literacy. It's about um falling in love with reading from an early age. So it's really targeted at zero to three, three years old, all the way up to six. But this is a new part of our children's museum that brings phonics and reading and letters to right. life in a really nice. engaging way. And then uh, in early July, we're opening an exhibit in the Science Museum called Advancing Health, presented by Mayfield Brain and Spine. It's all about body systems, how your body works, uh, the blood, spine, skeletal system, muscles, heart, and what happens when those systems break down and who are the healthcare professionals and what are those innovations that help you get back to health. Very cool. Always new stuff, always things happen, again, especially in the summertime for the family. Um, now, we're talking to you, yeah. Cody, right yes. now. Later in the, in the program here, can you make available to us a man named Salty Jack? You know what? That sea dog's always trolling around. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised he's not in the fountain now. I thought I saw him walking by earlier. I, we hired him to do one job, and he's not even out here. So I'm going to track him down. 
Uh, I'll, I'll bundle up my toga. I'll run after him. I'll okay. see if I can find him and, and pull him out. He's such a team player. And, and, I, and I know you have something else. Uh, let's tease it as nautical that Salty Jack will be ready to talk about. We're going to get a little nautical today. <laughs> oh, we are getting quite nautical. <laughs> Cody, thanks for coming Thank out. You, thanks for making this happen. And we'll talk to Salty Jack soon. Bob, Jim. Thank you. All right, coming up, we're going to draw the news in a new way. However, will we do it? We need to be that way so that they. Can... I think. Okay, we're figuring this out. Well, we're figuring this out. We have come ashore. I think it's. I think it's very important to we note that come. we're hanging out down here at Union Terminal. We have already been in the fountain, and we shall go back to those rapids uh, before too long. But we need to do something because it's Friday. That's right. And on Fridays on Arc Cincinnati, we do a segment called Draw the News, Pictionary style, where. A story from the week, we, uh, you know, pick out of a hat, yep. and then the other one has to guess what it is while yep. we draw it. So today, because we don't have our regular whiteboard with us, we're going to chalk the news. <laughs> we are chalking we the news. we sidewalk chalk. Why yeah. not? Okay. okay. All right. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you draw and pick. All right. By the way, numb are my toes. I, I know. My toes are very dumb. Yeah. Okay. But which, uh, what would be the best place oh, to draw so that maybe no. you can see it? Okay. How about right here so we get we, we, we get the All sun? Right. And okay. don't forget at home you can play along and try okay. to figure out what Bob is drawing. Okay. You ready? Okay. I'm going to stand back here so I can guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. By the way, I'm taken back to like Mary Poppins. Yes. And I, I want to, now that you've said I that, like I want to, I want to sing so much. Drawing. It's a bowl. It's, it's a, it's a person in a canoe. The, the girl's Canoe Championship NCAA. Boom! That is wow, absolutely correct. Me. So the Good rowing job. championship in Claremont County, the women's rowing championship, going to be held from the 31st of today through June 2nd at Harsha Lake at East Fork State Park. 750 athletes from 38 different universities will be competing to host this event. It takes community support and sponsors and more than 600 volunteers we are told should be i mean i'm telling you what to be out on the water on a day like today as one who has already been out on the water <laughs> uh, let me just say uh, perfect i yeah. mean perfect ideal ideal they wanted us to grab a brighter color so i'll brighter? try this okay i'll try this like right okay. blue because it well, wasn't hold working that. very well all right okay. and then i'll pick grab you that okay my turn so i'll need a different square i'll go up above the canoe okay all right let's see what did you know I what's get? great is that kind of looks like a cave painting it I does. Did. you know and what i mean on the walls here look at the that Cincinnati Museum Center. okay <laughs> all right okay uh, all right. All right. Here we go. Chalk in the news, this week baby. That we talked about. I'm going to get down here all and right. I'm going to draw. Okay. Jen, sometimes I forget you're left-handed. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, so don't this be sorry. Is... Celebrate that. That's, uh, <laughs> That's it's a. It's the back of a chicken. It's, it's a, a large. It's a. It's a ring. It's a ring on somebody's. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. No, I'm not married. Uh, uh, somebody got divorced. Uh, it, it, uh, they lost their ring in the water. The, the ring fell in the, in the, um, in the water. Okay. Oh, I, I vaguely remember that. Wasn't uh, there a story about... Yes. There was... There, yes, there, there, there were two. Yes. They were... Well, wasn't there a couple that, like, they were no. married, they got divorced, and then they found uh, the ring in the water? Didn't we do that story? Isn't that a thing? There was, was a person with an extra thumb. It's um, an extra thumbed turkey. It's a... It's... It's an eyeball. I can... My eye... No, it's a football. It's a football... The rings? Oh, all of the fake championship yes. rings. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you want to you read about the thing, about the, oh, fa yes. the fake I championship I rings? I'm so excited. Um, you did a great job. Thank you. It was very so, good. Over $1.3 million worth of fake championship rings were seized in Cincinnati by customs agents. 345 rings in total. Overall, the rings represented 18 different sports teams. Excellent job. Thank you. There was another story, I swear there was, about a couple that had been married, they got divorced, they got back together, but the guy had lost You're a right. ring, and then they found it. So I, at You're first, right. I thought that's maybe where you were going. You did a great job. It is now my turn. Okay. Okay. Um, we're running out of squares. Well, no, we're not. We'll go right There's plenty of squares. Okay. okay. All righty. Here we go. Don't forget to play at home if you remember stories from the week. Holy what could it be? Moses. All right. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. I, mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> I still can't believe we're doing this live on top of <laughs> Neither okay. can people who are watching. Yeah. All right. Um, something that happened this week. You're getting really detailed with it. Let's see. It is a porcupine. It's a dinosaur. They found a, uh, they found, no, they, they got the new stegosaurus. It's a wolf. It's a, why are yours looking so much like hieroglyphics? It's a wolf's behind. It is. 
<laughs> Why? Well, it's not a wolf. It's not. A, is it an animal? It's going somewhere. It's a wave. Oh boy. Um. I. I is it a? It's not, not the dinosaur story where they found the new the skull of the dinosaur. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's a pond. Is it water? It's a. It's, it is a creature. It's a snake. It. It's a wolf. Is it? Is it not a wolf? Is it a serpent of some sort? Serpent mound, something. <laughs> serpent mound. It's, no. uh, um, it, what animal stories do we okay. have this week? Okay, he's going <laughs> as he crawls like an animal. Are we okay on time, Tanner? Okay, now he's going a different direction. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's a football. Nope. It's somebody yelling something. There. Um. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I need some help. It's it's a person. It's a pregnant person. It's a pregnant person. Okay. Oh, that, 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 uh, uh, I can't remember the Tamandua, Tamandua at the Cincinnati Zoo is having a baby. Okay. Tamandua, Tamandua? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Tanner, by the way, my earpiece just came out so you could be telling me to shut up. I don't hear he, you. He didn't. He okay. said it's all right. So okay. let me tell you what's going on with the Tamandua. Now I can't. I ripped the paper. No, I'm kidding. I can hold them together. So the Cincinnati Zoo announced that I love the Southern Tamandua is pregnant with twins. It's an, it's an anteater native to the South American continent. This is the first time a multiple birth has been observed in a tomato and human care. Twins. I would like to go back and point out that... <sighs> Clearly, how did I not get that? That is clearly Tamandua. It, it was. But which we're not even sure we're saying right, by I the way. it was like a wave, like something that's happening. Yeah, but now I, was, I see pregnant. You see how I made it? I made it. Very the, good. I, thanks, Excellent. Jen. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. We got one more? One more. It's me. Good. All right. Good. Whew. That was... All right. That I, took everything I had artistically. Can I have the blue? I'm not going to lie. That was the, that was the extent that was of specs. what I'm able to do. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. How to do this. All right. One more story from the week. I'm gonna go up here because that one's in the shade. Okay. All right, Rob. Yep. Ready. Here we go. What direction do those things go? Um, okay. It's um It's a hat? Is that a is that a is that a hat on the person? Just a, a Viking hat? We're not doing the Viking celebration anymore. Yes. The Cincinnati oh. Reds have stopped doing that. Well, way to go. Mm. That was awesome. Mm. Excellent Viking hat, by the way. <laughs> Excellent you. Viking hat. I'm trying hat. to remember which way the Viking. Like, Viking. No, that was good. That okay. was good. So, was for, good. for those who had not heard, the Cincinnati Reds, of course, would always celebrate their oh. home runs in the dugout. They would come over. They would have that, the helmet. They have a little rubbery bat. And they're not doing it anymore. Yeah, the team's X account put up a post that simply says "gone, gone, but never forgotten," never. with a picture of a Viking helmet. A lot of people are wondering why. While others say it's time to go, but we think trying to get that maybe maybe get the change up the yeah, mojo. Change up the mojo. Change, change, the mojo. Cha change yeah. up the mojo. By the way, we could have done. We should suggest to Cody, Viking funeral of the materials right here. Let's, we'll do that, but right now but, I think we need to get it over to meteorologist Tara Blake. Is that Tara? What said? Tanner? That tamandua coming out of the egg, Bob? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a tummy. It was a pregnant <laughs> tummy. It was a tummy. We're all like egg, coyote, fox. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love watching y'all out there. The weather is certainly beautiful, as you can see at the, the museum. And we have blue skies pretty much everywhere. Better weather for the next couple of days in the way of temperatures. If you've been hoping for that summer feel to be back because wearing a sweatshirt in May is not okay with me. Maybe you feel the same. We've got 78 for you here today. Beautiful sunshine. No sweatshirt needed other than if you were out early. It was pretty chilly this morning. We've already started to jump back up, but Saturday we've got a high of 80 later in the day. Afternoon, evening rain and storm chances start to arrive. I think it's mainly rain and I'll dive into that in my future cast in just a moment. And then it exits on Sunday morning. So you get Sunday afternoon and evening without any weather worries. I've adjusted the forecast. I'm now keeping us on the quiet side Monday. I think rain and storms are back though Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and we're going to have more humidity. So a full blast summer feel and rain and storms, which means bigger rain total. So make sure and stay tuned for that and stay updated with our free weather authority app. But here's today. Nice and quiet mix of sun and clouds. Just beautiful lighter winds, lots of sun. Clouds will increase tonight. There we go with the start of rain west. Here's two o'clock in the afternoon. 
Watch as it tries to get close to the city, but really doesn't become widespread until late, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Not much intensity here, so just a good drink for our yards. Does already weaken by about 5 o'clock. I'm looking at quieter conditions, certainly by the afternoon hours. So we're going to move that first kind of round out. Then we get that beautiful weather we're going to have to take advantage on Monday because Tuesday, rounds of showers and thunderstorms. Wednesday, rounds of showers and storms. Thursday, still not done, maybe late. So we get a drier day on Friday. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. So 78 your high today, mostly sunny. That's the only day right now that as far as the weekend goes, you don't have to battle with showers and storms. You're dry again Monday and much warmer next week. The warmest Tuesday at a high of 86. We've got more with Bob and Jane live in the water. What are they going to do next? Welcome back to this special floating Friday, although we're not floating right now. We will be again, and we were yes. uh, Friday edition here of our Cincinnati at the beautiful, look at this, yeah. Union Terminal, Cincinnati Museum Center behind us. Just Truly gorgeous. one of the most recognizable buildings in the tri-state, one of your more iconic structures, architecturally speaking, of its time anywhere around here. And don't ever forget John Lomax's absolute yep. favorite landmark in Cincinnati. He, I, he, I think, would enjoy seeing it from this perspective very, very much, say, by I'm, the way. I'm not sure if he'd be proud of us right now or not. Uh, yeah, I, I, think would. 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 I think he, he would. He likes some shenanigans. You know, and, and for people of a certain age, that building also means a little something else. If you were like Jen and, and me, you remember watching Super Friends when you were a kid, and you remember the Hall of Justice which is exactly what that building looks like. I, I cannot, I can't drive down that section of I-75 and look over here and not think Hall of Justice. I know. It's and, it's pretty incredible. And so isn't there a movie around here that's well, gonna be filmed? Maybe, 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 yeah. Okay, we cannot confirm in any way that it will indeed stand in for that, that fictional home of the Justice League and the Super Friends, but what we do know is a Superman movie will be filmed right here in the tri-state area, at least portions thereof. The movie is being directed by James Gunn and is being filmed in both Cleveland and in Cincinnati. David Cornsweet will be playing the Man of Steel this go-around, and according to some reports, filming in the tri-state may happen as soon as mid-July. As of right now, it is not clear where in the city they will be filming. The movie now being dubbed simply Superman, slated to be in theaters next summer. Jen, I'm, I'm telling you, if ever there was a moment where, a, I, I, I wonder if James Gunn has has looked upon this building and gone, oh my lord, right. why would we, why would exists, we yeah. not yeah, you have to. make that right. the Hall of Justice, or even if it was just the exterior. A cameo or something for something, the building, yeah. Something, because yeah. it is just... Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely it's just perfect. perfect. Yeah. All right. Speaking of perfect, I love Moana. Oh, the movie. great movie. But Moana 2, it is already setting records. It's not even out yet. Uh, 178 million people viewed the first teaser trailer wow. for the animated sequel in its first 24 hours. Let that soak in. 178 million people <laughs> viewed it. Just the teaser trailer, not even the full trailer, it's in its first 24 hours online. That's more than for any other trailer in Walt Disney Animation Studios and Pixar history. The movie opens in what? theaters it's on November 25th. More any, other, any one? other trailer in Walt Disney Animation Studios and Pixar more history. More than Frozen? More than Frozen, Bob. Wow. Yeah. That is, that's it's a, a shock. And, it, and don't get me wrong, it is great. I absolutely adore Moana. I think it's a great movie. Um, but I just had no idea that it would generate that, that yeah. kind of if, uh, clicking power. If Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, yes. shared it, he's got millions and millions and millions of You know, one thing I, I haven't heard, Lin-Manuel Miranda did the music in the first one. I, I wonder if he's back to do the music. That I don't know. For the, for the second I, I mean, I hope so, because yeah. obviously he's crazy, crazy talented uh, as well. Um, speaking of crazy, crazy, I just want to point out that yeah. I just had a Salty Jack sighting. Oh, so he will be, okay, good. he will be, he's around here. I feel like we be, couldn't do this without him. He's going to be appearing here in the water at some point. So we'll try to keep him under control. Cannot wait. Hey, a new documentary promises medieval intrigue that could rival Game of Thrones. The three-part series is called Renfair, and it follows a fight 
over who will run the Texas Renaissance Festival. The owner, King George, of, of course, uh, set to retire, and a war of succession is brewing. The three-part documentary series launches Sunday on HBO and Max. Let me tell you, Ren Fair folks, don't don't mess around. People who are really into the Ren Fair, they don't they don't mess oh, around. Oh no, you much. do not mess around with that at yeah. all. I'm gonna grab this from you here. Yeah, absolutely do that. But have you been you've been to the Ren Fair? Oh here. yes. Yeah, I'm just, I go every year if I can. I'm trying to imagine that being handed off. And Tanner, maybe you can confirm for me. So this is a documentary. Is this based on something that really happened down there, or is it more like mockumentary style? Do we know? Oh, it's an actual documentary. It's a real, like, real thing. There must have been some some shenanigans yeah. in, in backroom doings down there at the Texas Ren Fair. Oh, well, just saying. Uh -oh. I'll watch it. Medieval on Sunday. I will watch it. That's okay. for sure. All right, uh, I'm going to watch this too. I know you are. Jeremy Renner is joining the cast of the newly announced Knives Out movie. Yes. The mystery franchise stars Daniel Craig as Southern detective Benoit, Benoit, Benoit. 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 I can never say it. <laughs> Benoit. 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 This would be Renner's first film since his, remember his snowplow accident? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so this is his first film back. Plot details about the new movie have yet to be revealed, but the writer and director, Ryan Johnson, says this is Detective Blanc his most dangerous case oh. yet. Well, and the, the thing that's great about it is not only do you have Daniel Craig, who is amazing, yeah. the casts of have the other great. two have been universally yeah. awesome. And it looks like they'll very much be that way again with this one. Benoit Blanc. By the way, I don't think Tanner realizes what he did. He went Ren Fair to Renner. Oh, I'm sure Tanner Ren knows Tanner, exactly did you, what he can did. Can we confirm, did you know that or not? Ren Fair to Renner. Tanner's good. He <laughs> said, oh, says yeah, yes, yes sure. but I don't think that's true. <laughs> have, have you seen the, the new Jeremy Renner uh, commercials. He's doing a promotion with Brooks Running Shoes because it, it, it goes back to talk about his accident. No. And not only did he nearly die, but doctors told him uh, you know, he would never he would never walk again. Certainly never run again. Oh my gosh! And now he's out. No, you I know, haven't seen him. I'm sure he's out inspiring. running and doing all these things. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's, so glad that he is okay no, to gosh. the point where he can do these films. I, and, I enjoy and him very much. Yeah. I do yeah. too. Yeah, he's, he's and that fine. accident was just terrible. <laughs> Hey, uh, fans of, of Carly Pierce are sending the country music star and Tri-State native uh, their best wishes because yesterday she opened up about some health issues that she is currently facing. Pierce has been diagnosed with a heart condition that causes swelling and irritation of the tissue surrounding the heart. Now, we were there in September of 2021 when the Taylor Mill native returned to her hometown for the unveiling of signs in her honor. The Grammy winner is currently on tour with Tim McGraw and says her shows will change a bit to keep her heart rate under control. Now, Pierce told fans she's going to be fine, but says for now, she must take this absolutely seriously. And I think everybody, obviously, is going to give her the, the time, the space, and whatever else she yeah. needs to, to get herself That's scary. You know, right and healthy. And absolutely. She's such an incredible talent. And to know that she's, you know, from right, right over there. Right over there. Yeah. Yeah, from right over there. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I hope, wish her well, and I hope that everything gets figured out and yep. they're able to keep it. it looks like she's staying on tour right so that's that's a good sign but we wish you well yeah well uh, the title song of the summer may sound silly but it is actually a big deal in the music industry to be okay. called you know the song of the summer sure and there are some early contenders for the title this year entertainment okay. blog the av club made a list of its song of the summer predictions their top picks include espresso by sabrina carpenter Million Dollar Baby by Tommy Rickman, Good Luck Babe by Chappelle Roan, and Lunch by Billie Eilish. You also have to factor in, of course, that Taylor Swift and Beyonce have new albums out, maybe new singles there, and there can always be an out of left field contender like 2020 song. Remember that song of the summer was Running Up That Hill. Yeah, true. Stranger Things. came out in the 80s. Yeah, lifted that right but back Stranger to the top. Stranger Things lifted that did you, right back up. Did you, by the way, know any of the songs that you just. No. Did you just, I don't know a no. single one of them. Nope. Not one. Do you remember, like, is there a song of summer that you remember? I can tell you right now, 1989 was Pour Some Sugar on Me, Death Left. Yeah. I don't know why I remember that, but I do. 1992, I'm trying to think of what the song you, of summer was. No, I don't have a memory to, like yours where I, I can just remember the summer of 1992 and the songs that specifically I, I, came out then. I feel like Montel Jordan, This Is How We Do It, was around that mm. time. It may not have been 92, though. It might have been around 90, 93. But about that time, Gosh. but it is absolutely true. Some, yeah. It always seems like there is one song that hits and just it sticks plays over and over and, and over. doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, all right.
All right, so let's see. I'm supposed to do the time check, I think. Do it. Are we at the middle block here? Do it. Yep. Oh, what about my phone? There's a big clock. Oh, there's big a clock. clock. There it is. Uh, 8.41 right now. There you go. And Bob, yes. do you have your whale noises ready? <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Really Just good. Just ahead, I mentioned it before, we chat with Captain Salty Jack about an underwater adventure coming to the Cincinnati Museum Center. You do not want to miss Salty Jack. <laughs> Plus, I think we're getting back in the water. Yeah, we got to. Feels right. <laughs> okay. Is Bob doing it? Welcome back, everybody. A nice tower cam shot of Union Terminal. I'm not sure if you can see us from that angle. Probably not. We are just a speck in the beautiful fountain down here at Union Terminal, the Cincinnati Museum, sir. It is important to point out again, we got special dispensation to be in this fountain. You can't just come down here and get in the fountain. I cannot stress that yes, enough because please. you will get in trouble. Please do not do that. Yes. Uh, yes. Plus it's all really, really cold. So it is. You might it not is nippy. Anyway. Yeah, and I'm getting wrinkly. Uh, I'm getting the wrinkly toes. You know, you get the wrinkly toes. Do, is oh. that what you say? I like a boy. Yeah. I see. Oh. Someone has joined us though in the fountain, but I think that that person has special permission. I think that person lingers around here. Well, frequently. Not only special permission, but also <laughs> has a, a a special friend that is really. <laughs> Making this whole thing possible. Salty Jack! Salty Jack, ahoy! Ahoy, friends! Welcome! <laughs> Welcome to me, Fountain! <laughs> Thank you for sharing your fountain with us today. I know we've seen video of you not, not that long ago when they turned the fountains on. You, that's kind of when you reappear. Do you hibernate during the winter and then come out with the fountain? I do, I do. They, I, uh, I float down the drain. I, I live in the, the, the bathrooms here. That's <laughs> where we can find the most water most readily. But I, I, I hope it's not too cold for you. I was out here trying to warm it up a little oh, earlier. Did I don't it? want to know how you did that. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, you got something for uh, those who love the sea as much as you to come and down not, and they're experience. Not many. There are not many who love the sea no, like me. It is a special passion you have. But for those who are curious, what can they come check out at the Omnimax? Starting next week. So you've got, you've got a week. Blue Whales, Return of the Giants, Ooh. swims into the Omnimax Theater. Ooh. Have you all ever seen a blue whale? Not in person. Massive, massive. Now, school may be out, unless you're a fish, that is. But imagine three of those yellow school buses stacked end to end. Three of them. And you're getting to be about the size of a blue whale. I did not realize, in all honesty, that that's how large they are. Three school buses. Three school buses. They're the biggest animal that's ever lived. Bigger than dinosaurs, even. Now, for somebody who's never seen a film in the Omnimax before, I took my son, I think it was a couple summers ago, to his first Omnimax experience, and he was blown away, you know, about it. Ex explain how the Omnimax experience goes, like what, what the screen is like. Imagine the horizon on the open sea. Mm. Sky mm. as far as you can see, water as far as you can see, ear to ear. That's kind of the Omnimax theater. It's all around you. It's to the left, to the right, above you. It surrounds you in this dome theater. It's kind of like the sphere before there was a sphere yeah. out in Vegas. That's right. That's right. You know we pioneered it here. <laughs> it pioneered is, the sphere. It is an immersive experience. It is the closest you'll get to swimming alongside blue whales, blasting into outer space, or going to hundreds of other places around the world. Salty Jack, occasionally you sound like you have a, a little bit of an Irish heritage there. I, I've been around the world now. My family wanted me to go into the fish stick business like my brother <laughs> Gorton, but uh, but the sea was calling me and I had to I had to go. You know, you're a man of many places, Salty Jack. That's, yeah. what, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. So um, a lot of times with these Omnimax films, they have um, kind of famous narrators. Is there somebody that's doing that for this one, or because the voice plays a big role in this? The voice does play a big role, as we're, as we're seeing in this segment here. <laughs> uh, for, for Lord of the Rings fans, you may recognize the narrator of this. It's Andy Serkis. Oh! That's right, Gollum himself. Yeah! Narrating wow. Blue Whale's Return of the Giants. Oh, that's really cool. That's it, really, he really does cool. a marvelous job. He adds a lot of gravitas to it. Yeah. But also injects some fun into it, because for all of, for all of the teen boys watching, there is some whale poop in the film as well. Ah! And I would assume for a, a blue whale, that, that's not a little bit. <laughs> it, it fills a poop deck or two, that's for sure. But it's not all fun and games. That poop is very important because whales dive super deep in the ocean. They fill the, they're filled to the gills with krill. Yeah. That's what they eat. They don't have gills, so it's a bad joke. But when they come back up, 
they poop at the surface. So they're cycling nutrients from down deep in the ocean up to the surface. Okay. It is literally the circle of life. It is the circle of life blowing through the intestines of a whale. <laughs> well, that's not the only Omnimax film you have this summer, right? Isn't there another one? Right. We have another one right now. So you've got another week to see Deep Sky, which takes images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Now, I've seen stars before out on the open sea, but you've not seen them like this, let me tell you. And you've only got a few days to see it. But if that's not up your alley, you can check out Volcanoes, oh. which is incredible. I think Dr. Evil said it best. <laughs> it's as close as you want to get to liquid hot magma. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And in front of each of these, I have to tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. What I'm am I better? No, you, you, you here, move right? as you see fit to move, Jen Dalton. Um, preceding each Omnimax film. Do we still do the light tunnel? Because no matter what Omnimax movie I see, and I love them all, the light tunnel is enthralling to me. We still do the light tunnel. We have to. For, <laughs> for kids your age, for kids my age, for kids of all ages, we still do the light tunnel. It is a crowd favorite. Yes, it is. And you can still see the big projectors, right, Ben? We, we, you can still see the big projector. Now, interesting, just a few years ago, we went from film these 200 pound platters of film yeah. to digital oh. and it was it was a slow process to get there to bend that on the screen to make it feel like you are really there that it is immersive and it surrounds you but they've got it there and as a matter of fact miss taylor swift herself even got into the omnimax game uh, a few films ago yes so, right indeed. those of you lucky enough to see it you knew what i was uh, talking that was about. a hot ticket a hot ticket yep yep hey, All right. salty jack salty jack thank you for taking time out today we appreciate it. Thank you for floating by. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna float off. Okay. okay. Very well. Very well. Right. Bye. Salty Jack. Bye, Salty, Salty Jack. Salty Jack. See you later. There he goes. What a good sport, Salty Jack. Taking Just some the time The absolute out this day. best. Yeah. I think coming up after the break, we are gonna get ready to wrap things up. Yesterday at our, our end of show post for Facebook, we asked you what other places maybe you'd like to see us come out and do do some shows. From. Yeah. And we're going to talk about so that. So we're going to hear from people. And then, of course, we'll have to do another post today. So we'll be thinking about that. Yeah. Meanwhile, let's oh. float off. We haven't really made it to the center I'm of so this I'm so worried, sound. though. I'm going to lose control. Yeah. Yes. I didn't think that through. <laughs> It. Without getting super wet, but we just accidentally yeah. backed into that fountain. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah, that's okay. It feels good. It's refreshing. Yeah. Can, can you guys hear Jen's microphone okay? Are we all right? I know we uh, switched up our audio oh. there. Yep, we're okay, good. We're so good. we're I I can't control my the spinning at all right now. We just gotta Okay, so we're just gonna go. Whatever backwards. happens, happens. So at the end of the show yesterday, Here, we sort paddle. of teased that we were gonna be someplace special today, and obviously that special place is the fountain here at Union Terminal. We do want to stress again. Yes. You are not allowed to do this. We have special permission from yes. Cody from the Museum Center in the Union Terminal. Correct. So don't do just come. Too. Don't yeah. come down here. Just get yeah, in the fountain. Get in the fountain. But we would love for you to give us some other options of places that we could go and do the show. Right. And so people checked in. That was our end of show question yesterday. Yeah. And different people checked in. Joseph said. It's early now, but I think you should do a festival Friday and go to a different one each Friday. I think that's a great idea because between all the festivals we have and oh. county fairs, we could be somewhere every Friday. I was going to say, we would not run out, which we were talking if about they earlier. Would have us. We would not run out of festivals. By the way, my backside is so yeah, wet right now. Yeah, I'm so, glad I, my microphone is here on my, my lap. Front because, pocket. Yeah, front pocket was yep, the way to go. My awesome. phone, on the other hand, is probably worthless. Yep. Um, also, checking in was Kristen. Kristen said another great place, the Cincinnati Zoo. I love that. We were just there yeah. talking to the, the, the little blue penguins, hanging out with the giraffe. What was yeah. his name? Zeke? Was his name Zeke? Mm, I can't I remember. Think it was Zeke. I can't remember. I think but it was Zeke. Uh, you had some great suggestions. David said, I'd love to see, love to see you guys. Brisket? What? Brisket? Bris no, brisket was the penguin. Brisket was a penguin. Wasn't Zeke the giraffe? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. anyway, David said, I'd love to see you guys do a live show from the LMM train in Lebanon. Or the Whitewater Valley Railroad in Metamora, if it could be arranged. Bob and I, back in the day, <laughs> spent a lot of time on that train in Lebanon because we used to do murder mysteries on that train. We did, we did. Yeah. It would be, it would be familiar go, territory. We'd have to go to the Golden, Golden Lamb. Golden Lamb afterwards. too. Got to finish the show yeah. at the Golden Lamb. Yeah. That's the only way to go. Hey, Gene has a great suggestion. One of my favorite places, the Joe Nuxall Miracle Fields. We could go out there and hang out, maybe, and okay. uh, visit with the good folks who 
who make playing the national pastime possible for anybody who wants to play. Lori Spenny Stewart says, come to Hamilton. Things are hopping in our city. I know that's true. Yep. She says, maybe Bob could stop at Flubs Ice Cream and get his signature Sunday. Do they have a Sunday named after you? We, uh, we went out there and I created oh. uh, a special okay. a special. Herzog related uh, item and does it was it have bacon so on it? it does not have bacon oh. a lot of peanut butter though yeah, I bet. a lot of peanut butter uh, Cheryl also checked in and she said the Reds baseball hall of fame and museum another great spot and I think they've still got that long ball exhibit going on which is a just an outstanding yeah. Uh, exhibit, okay. as I understand. I haven't been down there myself. But we'll Maybe we need to get inside the museum center at some point, too. Oh, yeah. Check out one of those new exhibits that Cody was talking about. I want to go down back like I did in the old day, down in the in the woods part of the Children's Museum downstairs, and see if I can still fit in the treehouse? In the one thing, yeah, and crawl down. Yeah. I could definitely get stuck in there. Okay. I just pulled this out of the raft. Is that That's bad? Be. I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's not going to sink. Um, hey, this has been fun. This is different. This is Arc Cincinnati. It's not what you're used to. We're not aiming to blow you away with, with a traditional newscast. We're here to remind you that we live in a... Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest. You want to see more, so click some of those links. Or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.